Hey there. Today I would like to talk about ink again. This is the third video in my series on ink and ink colors, and today I'll talk about red inks. Now, I like red inks. I can't say I have dozens of different red inks, but then again, red is kind of red. Um, there are some shades in red. There is something called rouge, which is a, a lighter, not a saturated red. Uh, and I, I like that, but I, I prefer the really red reds, like 1670, for example. I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of that in a minute. Now, one thing you have to be aware of when using red inks, I'm just you know sharing this for those of you who are new to bottled ink or haven't used it that much, um, red ink can be a bit aggressive. Now, that does not mean it will damage your pen if you have a, you know, a, a good ink. It will not do that. Don't worry about that. But it will be a bit difficult to clean out. And that is because, because red is very saturated and it can, you know, sometimes even clog up a pen. So be a little careful if you've used a red ink. Um, clean your pen. Clean it well when changing inks. So just to give you an example, I had J.L. Band's 1670 ink in my Parker Urban. Yes, I will still do a review on that. Uh, I recently got it and I have just put the grip with the feet and the nib in this uh, container of water. It's going to be in there all night. I've already flushed it out with uh, water and a bulb syringe, but it's going to be in there all night because even after a full bulb syringe of water, there was still some red inky water coming out of the pen. So just a small warning, if you're going to use red ink, make sure you clean your pen well. Okay, this having been said, uh, let's move on to the ink and the writing samples. If you've seen the previous two videos, you know the drill. For those of you who haven't, um, I will use a glass dip pen to do these demonstrations. And a dip pen gives you... Uh, it, it, more ink is loaded onto the pen, more ink than you would get in a fountain pen via the regular feed system. So the writing samples will be a bit more saturated than those you would get from a fountain pen. So I will indicate during every writing sample uh, the amount of saturation you could expect if you would use that ink in a fountain pen. I will just indicate that. And that's pretty much it. So we'll move on to the writing samples next, and I will upload some high-resolution shots of the writing uh, at the end of the video. And, uh, and that's it. So I hope this is useful, and uh, I'll see you later. Okay, so here we go with the red inks. So I have seven lined up here. And I will start with what I think is the lightest in my collection. And that is Gerbans. Rouge Bourgogne. So this is a rouge. This is not a very bright red, um, but I do like it. I do like the um, the shade. Uh, it's almost. Well, I, I, I won't say violet. It's not violet. It, it, it really is rouge. It's a different um, different tint of, of red. So I'll do some writing with it. This is the level of fountain pen saturation. Um, so if you would use this in a fountain pen, then this is what you can expect. So I suppose one could also classify this as a... Well, not so much a purple, but it, it is, of course, it is on the purplish end of the, the red spectrum. Um, 
strictly speaking, there is no purplish end of the red spectrum because spe red is a primary color, as I'm sure you know, and purple is actually um, made by mixing blue and red, two primary colors. Uh, but in any case, you, you probably understand what I mean. This is not a highly saturated red. I will show you those in a minute. For now, we will just continue with uh, Iro Shizuku Momiji, a Japanese ink made by um, Pilot. And actually, I forgot which is the brand name and which is the name of the ink line. Uh, so, forgive me, but just do a check for this. Iro Shizuku Momiji. Okay, um, this is also a bit of a rouge color, um, but I think it's a bit redder than the um, rouge bourgogne. So I, I put these after the other, so that you can one after the other, so that you can see the contrast. Uh, I do like this ink. I don't use it that much, I have to say, but it's it's definitely an interesting color. So let me do some writing with it. One thing that I always notice when I haven't used this for a while is how wet it is. This is a very nice, fluid ink. I really like that. Of course, all ink is fluid, but I'm, I'm sure you can understand what I mean. This is a very wet, supple ink. Yeah, and I think this is the level of saturation you would get in a fountain pen. So I'll clean the pen again, and then we move to what is one of my favorite Cherbin reds, that is Rouge Opera. It's opera Red. I suppose this is named after, I don't know, the, the, the stuff opera singers put in their cheeks or something. And I really like this. I think this is a, this is a very nice Truly is a rouge, but this is a very subtle color. Um, it's not extremely bright. In fact, it's it's well, I'd almost say it is it's flat in a color uh, as a color. But I I do like it. I do like the the well the subtlety. If you want to write with a red ink, but you don't want it to be too flashy, then I think this is a nice compromise. Although, to some, it will probably be a bit too bland, and I can imagine that, but I, I, as an ink, I don't dislike it. I'll do some writing. This is the fountain pen saturation, I think, if I remember correctly. I haven't used this one for a while. Okay, so these were the rouges, and for those of you who like brighter reds, well, here we go. We kick off with Gerbin's Rouge Caroubier, which is a very light ink. You may be able to see that in the bottle. It's actually translucent. You can see that in the light. Um, of course, it's not exactly translucent if you write with it, but I do like it. So here we have a really red red. So now we move away from the traditional rouge and we're entering the world of red ink. Do some writing. This is very saturated. Um, well, maybe not saturated. This is very uh, bright, but that's not the level of red I've seen in my fountain pens. 
this starts to be more, get more like it, yeah. So I think this is what you could expect in a fountain, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> this is what you could expect in a fountain pen. Yeah, that's about this, this level. Yeah, that's what you'd see in a fountain pen. Sorry about that. If I forget to move the camera, you'll have to forgive me, but I'm holding the camera with a tripod in one hand and try to concentrate on the writing uh, and, and, you know, do stuff with the other hand, so this is a bit erratic. In any case, yeah, I, uh, yeah, so I think, okay, so I think this is the level of saturation you would typically get in a fountain pen. Okay, now, for those of you who think that all of these reds are a bit dull, well, you may have a point there. So now we will move on to some really red reds, and to kick off, here is a very special ink, one of my favorite reds, but difficult to use in a glass pen, I have to slow down my writing a little bit. This is the famous 1670 commemorative ink. And uh, this was, I think, supposed to be a limited edition, but it wasn't. It is still being produced, and that's a, a good thing. A lot of people like this ink. Uh, it's sort of traditionally made, but it is compatible with, with modern-day fountain pens, so you needn't worry about your pen. Uh, one of the things I try to demonstrate here is that if you have a, a, a broader nib, so a, a broad medium nib or a, a really broad nib, and then you may sometimes get a type of gold sheen, a gold greenish sheen over the red. You don't see it very well here. I could try to zoom in a little. I'm not sure whether that's going to do anything. Nah, it's difficult to see here. If you really, you know, lay down a thick layer of ink, then you'll really see it. So if you use this ink for calligraphy, as I sometimes do, and you use really broad nibs of 5mm, 6mm, uh, then you really, you really see a gold sheen. Whether that's a problem to you, of course, it, that depends on you, but it's something you should beware of. I do think this is a gorgeous red. I mean, it's, it's highly saturated in a good fountain pen with a, well, I shouldn't say good, in a, in a fountain pen with a medium or a broad nib, this will give you fantastic shading, which can really go from light, well, light-ish red, blood red, to much darker, almost blackish red. I, that's, that's really gorgeous. And of course, I can't really show you the shading in the um, glass pen, but even so, I think you will see a little bit of the amount of variation. So, this is about the level of, of saturation you'd get in a fountain pen, normally speaking. Okay, I clean the pen again. And then we move to an ink that is not unlike the 1670, I think. And that is Noodler's Nikita. And Noodler's Nikita, you can get that in those big four and a half ounce bottles. And I have to say, I, I really do like it. That too has a little bit of that sheen I was talking about, but I think it's not as pronounced as with the 1670. Also, I think this is a good moment to point out the extremely cool bottle of the Nikita. So, you, you probably can't read it, but over here it says, We will bury you, Nivas Pohoronium, the famous quote from um, uh, Mr. Nikita, uh, Nikita Khrushchev. And then, here at the bottom, it says, Communism never produced enough shovels, nor did it give, nor did it ever give a free pen with a bottle of ink. And then it says CCCP, um, the um, uh, Soviet state of Russia, I think, rest in peace. 
Now, whether you like communism or not, it doesn't really enter into it. I don't really care, but I, I think this is one of the most amazing bottle designs I've ever seen. I think it's really, really cool. Okay, now I've closed the bottle, so I hope I have enough ink to finish a writing sample. I think I do. Okay. Yeah, so this would be the level of saturation in a fountain pen. I think that's, a, yeah, it's fairly reasonable. Now, if you compare these two, the 1617 and the Nikita, um, this, the, the 1670, I think, is a bit darker. The Nikita is a slightly lighter, um, but I think it handles better. Sometimes the 1670 can have some starter problems because of the way it's it's made. It's a, a typical mix, um, let's say an old-fashioned ink mix. And the Nikita is, is I think it's a bit smoother. Um, in all, I think both inks are very nice, and and well, you cannot fully use them interchangeably, but I think you could, you know, pretty you know much switch them around a little bit. I don't think many people would really notice the difference. Except that the 1670 gives you better shading, so that's that is one big difference. But the, as to the color, I think they are pretty close, in the same end of the spectrum. Now, finally, I have an ink. I wasn't sure whether I should include that today, um, but I I think I think it makes sense, and that is the uh, Sailor Gentle, and I think the specific uh, color because that's a, a series. Um, I think the specific color is called grenade, but it, it, it could actually be granite, as in pomegranate. Um, but in any case, I, I think this is a very fascinating ink. So I could probably also have used this in the sample of browns, which I'll do for you. Um, but yeah, um, it is reddish. And gentle is really spelled with a J in this case. I'm not suddenly suffering from a deterioration of my English or something. Um, Sailor Gentle, I'll, I'll put it down as uh, granite. Um, yeah, so maybe this is a bit too brown to, to put in this sample. But it does have something reddish, something rouge-ish. Um, a fascinating color. And this has fantastic shading. I can't show you that with a glass pen, but I promise you, put this in a broad nib and you'll, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's sick. It's really great. Even with this glass pen, you see a little bit of it lighter and, and darker. It's, it's really, really awesome. So if you're looking for a shading ink in this sort of reddish brown, brownish red, rougeish, whatever color, um, you need to get this, and that's all there's to it. Okay, so the final thing I do is I will write down the names of the different inks in that specific ink. I'm not going to do that now, I'll just upload a still photograph of that at the end so that you can see all the inks one after the other. Um, I will upload some high resolution shots of the writing samples I've done. And um, that's it. Uh, I think a logical step from red is either uh, purple slash violet, because as I said, red and blue makes purple or brown, because this is already a bit in the brown end of the spectrum, um, so maybe that's another good thing. Um, I'm not sure. In any case, I'll do both. I'll do brown, I'll do um, purple, um, maybe black and gray. I would probably, probably pull them, because I don't have that many blacks, uh, and I definitely don't have that many grays, so that would make sense. And then maybe an orange slash yellow 
uh, thing and then I think we have covered the majority of ink colors there may be some specialty inks out there but I think that should be it okay so I hope this was useful and uh, I'll see you later bye bye